Our rivers don't look like European rivers or North American rivers. They look like Australian rivers. They might dry out or we get big floods. They might look brown because of our old soil. So we have to think differently about how we manage our rivers, what we expect from our rivers. Melbourne grew rapidly in the 19th century. Huge amounts of industry and human waste were pumped directly into the river. A whole range of government actions has led to the massive improvement in waterways. So we now have a river we can be truly proud of. I didn't see my career and my interest in the environment and waterways really colliding or being able to work together until a job came up looking at the causes of algal blooms in the Darling River where they needed a chemist. So what I'm really interested in is understanding why the Yarra River is in such good condition and what are the big threats to it. What I want to do is to look at a whole range of classes of chemicals that are biologically active that we consume. And then for each of those classes of substances, does it have a biological effect? Chemicals are naturally in the water. And without some of those chemicals, the river would be sterile, nothing would grow and live. Part of my current research program is looking at some of the pharmaceuticals in the waterways. And these are drugs that we take, legal and perhaps illegal. And I'm talking about things like caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant and it can be a stimulant for other organisms as well. And so the question is, is this a problem? Other drugs that we look at are things like the antihistamines found in hay fever medication. We found that at very high concentrations, some of those antihistamine components stop photosynthesis. If you stop photosynthesis, you're stopping plants growing, and that can have a devastating effect on the environment. The most interesting place I've ever taken samples from was a small creek called Gwynn's Run in Baltimore. We could measure concentrations of heroin and methamphetamine directly in the waterway, and that depressed me that conditions such as that could exist in a city and it could be anywhere in the world. It was just an eye-opener for me as to what happens to an urban environment that's not looked after properly. We can drink our water in Melbourne completely happily knowing that there aren't these pharmaceuticals in there. That is not the case in other cities around the world where they don't have the luxury of having closed forested catchments to capture their drinking water. So one of the major reasons I'm doing this pharmaceutical work is to answer the question, is this a problem? And is it a problem we should be worried about? Is it a problem that billions of dollars should be spent trying to fix? You need the biologists, you need people like me, the chemists, to talk about water quality, to integrate the knowledge to get an overall assessment of the condition of the waterways. It's that exciting combination of working with other scientists and managers that provide one of the greatest challenges, but also the greatest pieces of enjoyment I get out of my work. <laughs>